I'd like to discuss the patterns of violence that erupted in ISCON after 1977, but before doing that, we need to point out that violent repression was the main reason that Silochan Das exposed his story of exploitation to the public media in 1985. He was convinced that us dissenters would be treated violently, if not assassinated, if we tried to expose the corruption. Internally, within ISCON, if we tried to work within ISCON, we'd be killed. So we needed outside help. So this was the same problem dissenters had after Sridhar Maharaj made a homosexual guru in 1936. Dissenters were beaten and killed because they had no backup protection. Thus the police and media only became involved after the fact. And this seems to be a common problem with cults. A police raid was just made on a polygamous cult uh, where they had to extract a couple of hundred children out of that cult. The police had to do that. The dissenters were just not capable of, you know, getting all that together. Slochan said, we need outside help, and what better help than the followers of another pure devotee, namely Lord Jesus. Sulochan thus made friends with the Berkeley police, and he tried to get other police and public media involved to help with his complaints, because he knew that only external pressure could reform ISKCON, since almost all the rest of the ISKCON devotees had left the battlefield, and thus only a few of us were fighting the false gurus. Worse, we were fighting not just the bogus gurus and their thousands of fanatical followers, but the bogus gurus' shiksha advisors, or apologists and cheerleaders, such as B.R. Sridhar Maharaj, B.B. Narayan Maharaj, B.B. and B.P. Puri Maharajas, all of whom had encouraged the false guru's process, and they criticized us because we wanted to worship a pure devotee and not their deviant and child molester regime. Sulochan also wanted to make a series of lawsuits against the leaders of ISKCON for fraud, breaking up marriages, orchestrated child molesting, and so on and so forth, again using the forces of external pressure. According to one ISKCON leader named Jayadveda Swami, while most complaints often go unheard, lawsuits usually get the attention of the leaders. Sulochan was keenly aware of this factor. It is very strange that to this day, many of the dedicated followers of the bogus GBC gurus and their advisors like Sridhar and Narayan Maharaj are still begrudging the activities of Sulochan as a bogus ritvik because he exposed their molester guru regime so bad. It would seem that one of the biggest reasons that people like Narayan Maharaj are still upset with us, Ritviks, is that when the molester cult he supported was banning, beating, and assassinating people like us, then the Ritvik followers of Jesus Christ, namely the police, media, and courts, came to our rescue, and they helped us expose their bogus cult. We have to understand the code words of the bogus GBC Sridhar Narayan regime. When they say that Ritviks are wrong or even poison, they are referring to the followers of Jesus. So, in other words, Jesus is being worshipped by priests and they are very upset to see a pure devotee like Jesus is still being worshipped instead of their deviants, criminals, and child molesters and other, you know, idiots that they forward as pure devotees who can absorb sins like Jesus. <laughs> of course, these fools do not realize that a criminal cannot absorb the sins of a flea. What to speak of saving humanity like a genuine Messiah is capable of doing. Now, a lot of devotees, including my friends even sometimes, they are very upset that I mention Jesus, but the fact is, without the teachings of Jesus, I would be dead. And the expose of the bogus guru cult would never have been possible. We'd all be dead. So we have to thank Jesus that we're alive, and the followers of Jesus have helped us sue the G these GBC gurus and put them in jail and everything else. Uh, without the help of the followers of Jesus, we would be finished a long time ago. So we have to give credit. So the Christians, the Ritviks, they saved us from the bogus gurus regime's death grip. I was even saved by the Christian police when three cult gundas chased me down the street intending to do me great bodily harm. Yes, the Ritviks saved my life, and that completely upsets the bogus GBC gurus, Narayan Maharaj, and others. Apparently, they want us to die. So this leads us to the next point. The fact is that some devotees did stand up and oppose the false gurus, but they were viciously repressed. For example, early on, Yasodhanandan was informed by Yuga Dharma Prabhu that a couple of the bogus gurus' thugs were waiting for him to leave his room so they could break his legs and he received other similar threats. Mahamsa Swami complained that he was getting death threats and Hridayananda told him not to worry, there was not going to be any violence, but there was considerable violence going on. Jayachirtha told me I was aggravating his followers and I had better be careful, he could not control their anger. In Bhagavan's zone, a few devotees who questioned the Guru were beaten up. 
Hari Kesh would get a gang of his thugs to wake people up at night, including women and children, tell them they had 30 minutes to vacate the property. And in Nuvandav and Chakradari Taru and maybe Todd Schenker were murdered early on. Later on, Randall Gorby's house blew up because someone had disconnected the gas line to his house. Even a newspaper reporter from Moundsville named Kathy Cuspy reported that a group from Neuvendaben had run her van off the road to frighten her from investigating. Many other assorted beatings and a few disappearances were reported just from this one project alone. Meanwhile, some of the residents of Neuvendaben were arrested for drug dealing and so on. At the same time, Kirtananda was being dressed in a golden crown and silk clothes while he was being carried on a palanquin. Kirtananda that had many little boys in his private cottage and motorhome with orders for the adults to stay away from those places, and when he sat on his guru's seat, he was covered with the hands of 50 boys, and everyone was aware of this. As it turns out, Silochan had been correct all along. Some of these boys were being molested by Kirtananda Swami. Around this time, October 1985, actually, a devotee named Tri Yogi, Michael Shockman, his real name, was trying to get Kirtananda to make him the guru of Ohio, and when Kirtananda refused, Triyogi beat Kirtananda over the head with an iron pipe. At this time, some of the Nubandavan leaders tried to blame Sulochan for the pipe attack, despite the fact that Sulochan hated the whole idea that one could become a guru based on a rubber stamp vote from Kirtananda Swami. In particular, Radhanath Swami, Umapati, Tapapunj, and some of the big leaders of Nubandavan and other ISKCON leaders started propaganda that Sulochan was to blame for the attack, and in this way they were trying to foment violence upon Sulochan. Give a dog a bad name and hang it. I personally met with Radhanath and Umapati after this attack, and they were saying that Kirtananda Swami is the purest devotee on the planet, and they defended keeping Kirtananda on his seat as a messiah of ISKCON. Satsvarup Das Goswami in particular focused his attention on Sulochan, calling him a poison pen because he was exposing the child molesting and other criminal acts. And Satsvarup Das Goswami's best friend, Rabindus Rup, joined in protesting Sulochan's crusade while the written rhetoric from the leaders increased to say that Kirtananda Swami is like Jesus. Huh. So, in other words, the leaders were saying Kirtananda is like Jesus when we, me and Sulochan were saying Kirtananda is molesting children. So they were increasing their rhetoric when we were increasing our rhetoric, so they were trying to, you know, basically get us killed. Slochan said they painted a bullseye on our back to kill us by saying, you know, we have no authority to criticize the worship of deviants. Also around this time, a devotee named Chachu Bahu wrote in his diary that he was going to blow the lid off of Iskan, and he was then found with his hands tied behind his back, and his throat had been slit. Uh, Jai Tirtha was also said to have had a dissenter tossed off his boat into a freezing cold lake in Nepal, which killed that devotee. So we were right. Me and Slochan were right. Those devotees like Chatru Bahu and Taru and this devotee who was killed by Jai Tirtha's people, at least allegedly, they tried to solve the issue internally. They went and complained to the leaders and tried to have a conversation with leaders, and they ended up dead. It just doesn't work. You have to go outside. You have to get the, the other writ fix, and in our case, that's the followers of Jesus. We had to get them to help us, and we still do in many cases. We still need the outside help of lawyers and courts and judges and police to help us deal with this violent cult. It's also interesting that once the molested children started committing suicide, again, we had to get help from an outside person, a lawyer named Wendell Turley in Dallas, Texas. He helped us file a $400 million law lawsuit against the molester regime, and right away, sympathizers with the bogus gurus named Sanat, Steve Voith of Angelica, New York, and Mukunda, Mark Whiteley of, I think, Manchester, England, they right away said, no, uh, no court case, no uh, publicity, no nothing, we shouldn't help these children, let them all die, and in fact, we should have these children killed, chopped up, and fed to dogs. So this is the uh, attitude of the false gurus and some of their sympathizers uh, towards their victims. They really don't have much sympathy at all. And whenever somebody comes forward and says, well, let's help the, the victimized people, you know, then the violent repression comes out every time. So Sulochan was killed on May 22, 1986. He's the first martyr of the Hare Krishna religion. And he was killed because he took on all these bogus people. And unfortunately, he was outnumbered and they killed him. But his legacy has lived on. And fortunately, more and more people are now agreeing with Sulochan's idea. And they're going to, you know, challenge these bogus gurus more and more. This is occurring.